Hey, it's Pallavi Kashyap. Welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome. In today's episode, I have my dear friend Kinta Pierre, who's joining me all the way from Grenada, a small island in the far south of the Caribbean. What Kinta does is twofold. She is a lifestyle coach and an investment migration consultant. She supports busy entrepreneurs and leaders, mostly women, with how to live a life of significance and self-care, to avoid burnout and to promote emotional bravery, to rise through the mom guilt because it never goes away, to reignite their souls so that they can show up, for example, as better wives, better professionals. She is also a teen mentor, speaker, and a best-selling author of an international anthology series, Embrace Your Imperfections. She has been mentored by legendary motivational speaker Dr. Les Brown and has been on stage with him in the US. That's a wow for me. She is on a mission to show others how to use their personal power and energy to design a life of significance that is true to who they are whilst building a legacy. So that was an awesome bio kinter and with that I want to welcome you to my show. Lovely having you here. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. How are you today? I am good and you know I had to do a little bit of deck up just to match up with your vibe with your frequency <laughs> because the vibration is totally different with you. <laughs> Thank you and also there's a big time difference because I think it's still uh, morning here 11:30 a.m. and but it's night time at where you are. What time is it now in India? exactly 9 pm <laughs> wow so big time difference <laughs> yeah, but that's how we operate if we are uh, dealing with a global market exactly. uh, and absolutely zero complaints about what i am doing i'll be doing this even in the midnight you know if, if there's a call so i have absolutely no complaints about this so yeah. uh, kinta i have a few questions to ask you uh my first question is uh, like from the bio you have uh, it's like you're wearing different hats you're an entrepreneur and you have so many other roles but amongst all these roles uh, which one which one do you think is is you know that fires you up the most well to be honest they both do because you see it does make my heart go pity patter to be able to help others to become more aware of who they truly are from a very deep place so that they can attain happiness and they can just have that lifestyle of significance and high vibration right but it also makes my heart happy to know that as a caribbean girl i have that freedom and that flexibility to travel the world to a over 140 visa free destinations and i can also wow. you know use my business to make a global impact which i am di- doing so it makes me happy to be able to you know help others which is with the grenada passport we help them to get that citizenship so that they can also expand their horizons they can have a business um in set up in the us with the e2 visa and that's one of our biggest selling points if you want to go to the us and you want to operate set up a business there and operate a business there or even move your family and send your kids to school then you can invest in my country's passport which is Grenada you can invest in that passport that's the, your stepping stone and once you do that then you qualify to apply for that US E2 visa so that you know that allows you to even have even more freedom and make that global impact so you see why the, they both make me happy <laughs> Yeah and I think you're to- totally living that lifestyle because uh, I can see that you're not just talking about it you're living it because yes you have that kind of a lifestyle where you can travel uh, and and like you mentioned 104 countries you mentioned right i mean that's everybody 140 yeah, 140 okay that's like yeah. a dream you know not every anybody and everybody gets that opportunity so yeah lifestyle is uh, I think that's that's important, and like I said, you're living it. Uh, you mentioned uh, twofold in your business, like you have twofold uh, perspective for your business. And somewhere I read uh, uh, that you take a stand for prosperity perspectives. So, mm-hmm. what exactly is that? I wanted. I was curious to know about what it is. Yes. So, prosperity 
and perspective. So let's let's separate them. Okay. So first of all, you know, growing up on a small island, you know, you tend to be very sheltered. You know, you're not really exposed to the big the, the big wide world as a child. And also how we grew up, we didn't have a whole lot of, um, you know, internet, television, all these things. So it was even more um, limiting. But then as I started to play my imagination, I always envisioned, you know, something bigger and wider than I was, than that environment I was in, right? So I kind of started to imagine just these playful you know, big buildings, you know, more cars, you know, more ocean, so much of that. And so that allowed me to kind of tap into something that we all have, which is prosperity perspectives, which is where we, you know, we imagine more than what or what, what meets the eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So every time I encounter life or my friends, my family, my clients, I notice that sometimes life throws things at you and you need to sometimes step outside the box and see like a different way, you know, find a different possibility. So that allows you to kind of go into that perspective, uh, prosperity place where, which is where God wants us to be. So whether you believe in, you know, Allah, Buddha, God, universe, whatever you say, it's the same thing. We have that in us, you know, to be able to see that, big picture, you know, bigger than us, bigger than we can even see, but guess what? We imagine it. And so it's, once it's real in your imagination, it's real. And perspectives, you know, it's just all about keeping it, you know, very optimistic. I mean, you know, people talk about be, you should be positive and that's great, but we all know that it's still the surface, you know, positivity is still surface. We have to go deeper. So that's why our perspectives need to be able to be prosperous if we want to go into that God way, that big way. Oh, interesting. That's a very Mm -hmm. different way of saying it. So uh, like you said, you had a major shift from where you were growing, you know, your life throughout how you grew up and uh, today who you are, what you are. I see this this has been a big difference. So uh, my question is, uh, who uh, who are your teachers or what kind of book or who did you look up to you know when you were growing up because this perspective even in your you know in your world in your life has been like a drastic change so tell us who you get inspired from sure well growing up again because you know what i saw was very limited you know in such a small on such a small island my biggest inspiration was jesus god you know faith And so, you know, a lot of the principles and messages in the Bible always had me going up here in my imagination and just imagine it. I would imagine it because, again, it was not in my environment. Um, For a long time as a child, I don't think I even looked at, I I don't know. I mean, I looked up, up to my teachers in school, at school. I also, in my neighborhood I would you know go to where the big houses are you know just a a different you know like the contrast of what I was seeing and as a teenager I started to get into these motivational things I would you know see little messages from even Les Brown so it was again it was a dream to even be on stage with him but we're going to talk about that but little inspirational quotes and so on um Les Brown and what's this other guy's name? Um, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. What's his name again? Um, uh, Tony Robbins, not Tony it's gonna Robbins. It's going to come to me. Um, it's going to come to me. But um, but that's pretty much it. So God, you know, Jesus, the stories in the Bible, the principles, my teachers at school, you know, and just motivational messages, you know, that I would just see from time to time. Mm-hmm. I don't know about, I just wanted to add this. Uh, I've been hearing from uh, different people about, I mean, the most successful successful people have been going back to these kind of books. And I feel uh, like for uh, Indians, we have uh, two major, not two, I think one major book, Bhagavad Gita, that's how it is called. It's like, it has everything, how to live your life, you know? So 
or mm. the principles to live your life actually comes from those kind of scriptures those are like the real wisdom books and even we have this yoga philosophy where it teaches you exactly you know if you do xyz these are the things you need to do if you deviate yeah. from this is when you know you are you are going to lose control of mm-hmm. your life so, <laughs> so so something like that i have not read bible but uh, maybe someday i'll surely read and just yeah. about the stories that you're talking about makes me feel, i'm like you know that curiosity is building up like what are those stories <laughs> yeah and you know one of those stories i'd say that just to keep it short one of the stories was a story with david and goliath so for mm. i guess people who knows about christianity they may be able to relate um I've david was just story. a little shepherd boy yeah, yeah he was just a little shepherd boy and goliath was this big giant Which, and yeah. he was able to slay um goliath with his little slingshot but with a whole lot of faith and trust in himself and that god can do it so i think that kind of just opened up that like you know wow like if this god is real like wow then i guess i can be like that too you know like the little things i have i can take it and turn it into something big and it has been quite a journey but like you said yeah the lifestyle shows because you know you sometimes you a lot, a lot of us we can talk i mean we all talk right but it's all about walking your talk and um you know being your brand being whatever you're teaching and whatever you're doing you have to be that in order for i guess people to really take you seriously respect you see the result you have to be that possibility yeah true true uh you mentioned about les brown uh, about the book and uh, les brown was also one of your teachers uh, i uh, have not followed les brown that much but i know he's he's a very good inspirational uh, person he's done a lot of motivational talks and all of that so tell us a little bit about your little time period yeah. where you collaborated just share a little bit about that Sure. So that story is quite interesting actually and it I mean some people might say oh my god was it coincidental but there's no coincidence right it's all about our intentions or desires and just stepping into that and walking towards it. But um so when covid happened believe it or not I actually um did not even know I would become a coach or I would be walking in that path. I was doing I was in my business I actually just um stepped into doing my business on my own because prior to that I was with a company so it was my year 1 of stepping into that new role <laughs> as business owner and you know I think that is when I got my calling if you want to call it that yeah. and um you know I can hear I felt it came as one word transformation and at the time you know sometimes we we as humans we can really our ego can really get to us right so i thought oh my god i need to help transform some people that was my first thought <laughs> but my coach and i we had a good laugh because the good thing about having support coaches mentors like they really help guide you and and shorten your learning curve so my coach said okay can she listen to me you know i poured my heart out and she said oh you know what I I see what you mean I see what you want I see it um let's make a plan and really the plan was that I had to do some transfor- transforming myself and part of that transformation I went and I did my coaching um certification so I can get my skill set and then after that I felt like I was ready for some some kind of deeper mentorship but I I had no idea what where how right So of course, you know, I said God, okay, what's next? I really don't know what's next. I'm feeling like this feels so good, but then I feel like okay, I'm done with it. What do I do now? And I was on Clubhouse one morning, and then Les Brown was in that room, and he was calling on entrepreneurs, people who have a story, people who've gone through some things in life, some tough things, and maybe they want to learn how to tell their story. learn how to be able to help people with that very said things that they had to endure right and you know a lot of times the things that we go through the adversity it's because it's helping us become a better person so that we can show someone else how to do it right who's in that situation yeah, yeah. so clubhouse you know i just i said you know what i i felt it in my heart that yes this feels like this is the next step and i said yes 
And that allowed me to have a, it was about six months uh, mentorship. It was virtual because, you know, everything at the time, everything was closed. So it was all online. And I got the opportunity to have him mentor me and a group as well. I was there with a group and he focused a lot on the messenger and the message, but more so the messenger. So he helped, he helped us with, you know, the principles that we need to become and be guided by in order to be this person, this powerful person we say we want to be. So we got some of his, you know, a lot of the things that he would have learned in his what, what is he, 70 something years now? So he helped us to transform our being, our doing of ourselves, and then also now to fine tune our message, to position ourselves, and to just be able to talk to people and also, you know, talk their language, have them relate to us as we relate to them. And, um, and that led to a couple of opportunities, which was pretty cool. You know, <laughs> I was able to, you know, share the stage with him virtually, you know, online. Um, talking events and also the big one in New York, uh, August, 2021 in person with him. And so that was really magical. And I say, I tell my friends all the time, I said, you know, it was not by coincidence. It was because I had an intention in my heart and I just gave God, I allow God to just do his, do his thing, Mm -hmm. bring me to that place, you know, let, let my intentions guide me, but also, May I just walk in your in the path that destiny wants for me? When you talk about intention, it's just like the thoughts you had, uh, which became a reality. And we often say uh, thoughts create your reality. So whatever you had been thinking from your childhood or, you know, from the time you talked about your COVID journey, that, that time, again, you had that intention. Again, that intention is a thought, a thought form. So that mm-hmm. actually manifested in the physical world so that's that's the journey right uh, so yes. it's, it's like yours is like an example or a story of that law of attraction series where what you think you uh, you know you manifest that in your reality yes yeah. so, so <laughs> that book was also a part of this oh the anthology series yes oh yes i forgot that part of the question sorry about that okay so <laughs> so again that same community with les brown um there was um a lady there, Jessica Moore, she invited some of us to um, join her in that, in that book, in that series, because she felt like, you know, we all have a story to tell. A lot of us, we, we go through all these experiences, but if it's one thing that's common throughout the world, not just one culture, we, we as women, we also feel a lot of shame in our stories. You know, um, we're uncomfortable about it. We don't want anybody to know that we went through it not realizing that the powerful thought is really that, you know, you went through it, you overcame it, and it's now it's your time to help someone else. So she invited us into that collaboration and I accepted. And there is three series to that. And so that was pretty cool to be able to be vulnerable and, you know, put some things in there that maybe that's, I didn't really talk about to a lot of people. And but just being able to show people that journey of hey, I was this, I was this, you know, self doubting person from a limited environment with not much opportunity or confidence or anything, and you know, journey on and transform into this powerful woman who owns her power and who is just stepping in faith and courage and doing the damn thing. <laughs> Wow, that's like a real story. I mean, yeah, I, I'm just trying to imagine in my mind, you know, from where and now to where. Yeah, um, that's quite inspirational. Uh, Kinto, I wanted to, I, I had this question, I asked this question to all my guests, uh, you know, uh, for a leader, you know, success, uh, there is a definition for success. So for you, uh, wherever you are, again, I also have now, after listening to so many definitions of success, now I know that. The definition keeps changing, you know, if you're a teenager, you know, your definition of success would be something else, you know, when you're like, let's say 30s in your 30s or in your 40s. So accordingly, so whichever state you are in stage you are in, what do you think is your definition of success? Yes. And you're so right about it because it can be changing because we are changing and we are evolving. Um, But to me, success is a very personal thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it looks differently for different people. But for me, it's 
you know, being able to show up in my power, mm. you know, unapologetically with an unwavering belief in myself. Mm. Yeah. And super faith, lots of courage. <laughs> yeah, right. And doing the things that I say I will do. Mm. Yeah. And um, also having that heart to help others along the way. You know, um, it's really simple, but every day it may look differently. So, so, so let's say maybe I have um, a goal of completing a, pro a project and then when it's done, yay, I'm successful because I, you know, I, I, I completed it. Yeah. I did it. But then, you know, we're continuing the journey, right? True. We were on top of that mountain. So now it's to start another mountain. So I think it's this is that consistent um, self-belief uh, unwavering and just, you know, that energy. Well, the energy is important. The energy has to be aligned with yeah. God's energy. I like to say in the sense that, okay, if you say you want this, then you're energetically, what you're doing, what you're feeling, what you're saying, everything has to align with that energetic vibration or else it won't happen, right? True, true, true. So success is just really showing up, owning your power, you know, um, staying at it. You know, having recently had a workshop and we, we were talking about that. Um, my coach was saying she, she, do, she doesn't like plan B and I agree. Having a, having a plan A and no plan Bs because it's a journey. So, you know, you have a plan A and you should stick with your plan A. You shouldn't have plan B, C, D. But again, different things work for different people, different folks for different strokes. So, I mean, I'm not saying that you have to do that, but, um, but I think going all in, in what you want yeah. and expecting to receive what you want. It may not be in the same way, but ex having that law of expectation, working with the law of expectation so that you can manifest exactly what it is that you want. Yeah, just I wanted to add up uh, on what you said about goals. In fact, I also read something yesterday about goals. So mm -hmm. there was one line where it says, have goals, but be flexible in the approach. Don't be very stringent. So C is the end point. So I have to just travel A, B and then reach C. You know, you have to be flexible. Yeah. Maybe you have to turn around or maybe you have to dig a hole or, you know, whatever it is. But have mm -hmm. a goal give, that gives you a direction. But at the same time, be flexible because nothing is permanent. Nature changes. Uh, mm -hmm. Seasons change. Everything is built on changes. So you can't be having a goal which is like so rigid. When you just yeah. said your story, it connected me to that part. I uh, agree. And I like yeah. what you said about, you, because the thing is what, what you said about nature, that's, that's powerful because in nature, for me, I always like to learn from nature. In nature, every, things, there are, it's always changing, ever changing. Absolutely. And so that's why also you look at nature, you look at the different seasons, you know, leaves drop, the fruits bear, the fruits don't bear, the, the, like... The weather, it's amazing, all the different changes. And that's why some wise person said that, you know, when you're asking for something, sometimes you, God doesn't want to hear the how. He, it, that's left up to God, the how. So we kind of flex into the non-linear things because it's easy to have linear things like ABC, like yeah. you said, but it's, it's in the non-linear. Once we can lean in into that, then I think um, that is what makes us powerful. And eventually we... We will be, we will find the success that we are all looking for. Yeah, interesting. When we talk about all these things, you know, we also need to have a certain kind of mindset to even accept or absorb this kind of information, this kind of knowledge, because this is not this what schools have taught us or, you know, how we have been learning in our schools or colleges or how we learned throughout. So I wanted to ask you about uh, something about mindset. I know you have a different mindset compared to many people around. So tell us something about how to develop a positive mindset or what yeah. keeps you going because Everything that you talk about is so inspirational. And, and there's, there's a lot of hard work that has gone into who you are today. So tell us, how will you inspire people who are listening to this podcast, for example? Well, those trendy words you hear out there that mindset is everything. Well, it really is. <laughs> and I think 
you know, well, for me, and again, my whole brand is all about mindset and lifestyle because mm-hmm. that is what it, it takes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think having first and foremost, having a spiritual relationship, having a spiritual, your spirituality matters. And I think it goes hand in hand with the mindset because in order for us to, to truly thrive off of you know, faith and thinking big things and thinking outside the box, we have to be able to believe in something bigger than ourselves. And that is where the spirituality comes in. So, you know, in order to have that positive, prosperous, prosperity mindset, we have to be close. We have to be close with ourselves and God, the God in us, whatever. I mean, people, everybody's different, but whatever you call it, your intuition, whatever it is, you have to be close to that and you have to stay open. So what you were saying just now, being flexible, you, we must stay open because every change is always happening. You know, evolution is always happening. Yeah. And so once we are open to change, open to surprises, open to experiences, open to experimenting, then that makes us more adaptable to having that, thriving mindsets you know and um and yeah and and the things we do every day you know having that routine of spiritual food and you know mental food for me that's big because the first thing that I do when I wake up in the morning is prayer affirmation talk to God whatever you want to call it but I have I feed my mind is the first thing that I do you know, it, of course, it connects with my heart, but the mind, because imagine you having, let's say you wake up, everything's great. You just jump right into your day. But then in the, at the middle of the day, something pops up, something big, something huge, something that's taking you down. Now, if you didn't prepare your mind in the beginning of the day, then chances are it's going to it's going to be much harder for you to fight that thing overcome that thing or do whatever it takes in terms of your thoughts or your actions in order to you know overcome so i think it's just so important to keep that mind fit um john asarov has this thing called neuro neuro gym neuro gym yeah <laughs> i love it because it, it it goes back to show how important it is to keep our minds fit you know and that, that, that stamina, that longevity, you know, having all the right things there, it, it makes all the difference in the world because as, as um, someone says, as a man thinketh, so, yeah. so he is, right? Yeah. That's so, pretty much yeah. it. Yeah, whatever you do early morning after you wake up, it's something similar to what I think most of the leaders in, you know, in their own spaces, they say the same yeah. thing, like, just tame your mind for the first 15 minutes or let's say for the first one hour of the day and your the entire day is set you know if yeah. you have a very stressful <laughs> day also for example like i wake up and i do my prayers i do my meditation and all of that so that's an additional thing for me so when i do that because my body is calm my mind is calm so if there's something a stressful situation in in the middle of the day but i have the ability or I can handle it, you know, I will not, my emotions will not go that way, my thoughts will not go that way, so yeah. I need to be strong. So yeah, it's so important and more people are getting to know this and it's becoming a habit. Rightly said, I think at least if you're not aware, we have to consciously do it, at least till the time it becomes a habit. Yeah. Uh, you already mentioned some of your good practices, but I always have this question, like what are the top three things or uh, three best practices in your life that you do every day that keeps you going? I think one you mentioned about, you know, early morning taming your mind. What mm-hmm. are the other two? Yeah. So I think another one is having, again, it comes back to the mind. That's, that goes to show you how mindset is everything. Visualizing. So apart from feeding the mind, visualizing my goals, my future, the things that I want, the things, you know, the, the visions that I have, putting the picture, keeping the picture in there, you know, having the movie and just keeping it there ever so often, flashing into it, writing down these things every day. That's, you know, that's a powerful practice. And then I think another one, I mean, there's so many, but it's hard to find three. But I think the third one I would say is the food that I put in my body. 
because there's a lot of people out there talking about there's certain vibration in the foods <laughs> did you that's see true. that Tom I think yeah, Stormy Walton had this thing talking about low vibration and high vibration foods right but anyways I am very intentional about putting healthy foods in my body I try to work with the 80 20 rule You know, in my journey so far, I've had some ups and downs trying to see what really works. There was a time when I was very extreme, but I realized, no, 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 you know, this needs to be fun. It can't just be so strict and so, you know, close. But um, food, you know, in the Caribbean, we grow a lot of our local food. So for me, that has always been a habit of mine from since I was born, always to have lots of fruits and vegetables in our diet. So, um, so yeah, I would say food intake is a big one and, um, and also the way I eat. So, you know, for example, my go-to most mornings is a smoothie. Well, you know, I have like tea, you know, like those, um, I think in in India, I don't know if you guys do it. So with the, the peel from the orange, for example, you know, you peel an orange and we take that peel and we, we draw, we let it dry. So we hang it up somewhere where it's dried. And then, so for me, ever, ever since I'm a little girl, I've had that tea early in the morning. So a lot of times I make that tea. Um, I have fruit, but I also have a lot of smoothies where I can put my sea moss and you know all the good stuff. And I think that keeps my energy um, high, you know, and that really helps me. So when I have low days, you know, I'm able to allow my food to help my brain to kind of, you know, to push yeah, me. Awesome practices and it shows you're so lovely and so gorgeous and, you know, not an ounce of fat here and there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Thank the you. choice of food. I, it's the choice. But of- you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of women, you know, there's a lot of women that want to be skinny. I actually don't want to be skinny. Like I'm slim by nature because of my parents. Um, they are all slim by nature. But I tell you, even as a, teenager into my early 20s I struggled a lot because I used to take these um I didn't like my skinny my skinny frame so I would take these these supplements that makes me eat more so I can put on some weight (laughs) so it's interesting how a lot of women would say oh my god the perfect size but then sometimes you you're like kind of trying to like balance off you know yeah I don't want to because the food the foods that I eat aren't very fatty Except, well, I love avocados, but like, you know, it's lean food. So I have to also try to put in the fats, you know, to keep that balance. Because again, I don't like skin. I I got the secret today. (laughs) I got the secret today. It's the food. It's not working out because I thought you're athletic. You work out, you run and all of that. Oh, well, yes. (laughs) Do you do that? I do, but I think it's the food. Because, you know, I went to Greece um, earlier this year and I met a woman who is in her 70s, I think. She's a a fitness instructor instructor, and she looks amazing. And you know what she told me? She said, Kinter, most people don't notice, but your abs are made in your kitchen. She said, your ideal body is made in the kitchen. Yes, we work out. Yes, we do these things, but the food has a big part to play. I mean, they all have a part. But for me, because even there are times when I don't work out, um, I may go for a walk or a little run if I if I haven't done like a full workout, but it's in my food. I, I, I use my food. So I would say, okay, you know what? This week I didn't work out so much. I'm going to make sure my food is on point. <laughs> got those tips, got the secrets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also wanted to ask about, we have talked a lot about mindset and everything related to that. Uh, at times we do face challenges in in our life so is there an, any challenge or what has been the most difficult challenge for you and how did you overcome that challenge so that you know people listening to this can draw some inspiration from that story so if you would like to share something on that yeah well there are always challenges I mean I think sometimes I make it look easy but it's not <laughs> <laughs> so Well, I think the biggest challenge, I am constantly, I have to constantly be refining my mind. I get it comes back to mind because when you're born in an environment that is very limited and had a lot of scarcity, Mm -hmm. it's, it really takes you 
more effort than the average person who maybe were born in another, you know, in a different environment. So it takes a lot from me mentally to always be, you know, having that, you know, maintaining or building or adding to that unwavering belief in myself. Because yeah, limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome, oh, it comes for me every day, every day. But again, because I have these practices, which is like visualization and so on, I really hold on to that. But that has been one of my ongoing challenges, ongoing, all the time. Another challenge, well, was it one challenge? I think, Uh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) that's one of my biggest, believe it or not, people think like, oh, you're so positive. That's why I'm so positive. Because, you know, there was somebody I heard say, you know, a good lawyer is not a good lawyer until he wins a case that is so hard to win that it takes something from him beyond his lawyer skill sets, right? Or a good doctor isn't a good doctor until he can bring somebody back from the dead. But so the point of that is I have to dig so deep every day for that confidence, for that motivation, for that high vibration to continue on, to press onwards, because it's hard. It, I, a lot of things come to me and tell me, you know, oh, well, I can't do this. Or, you know, I came from this. So why do I think I can go and do this? You, you know, so it's really, I think that's one of the ongoing challenges that has never stopped. Yeah, but like you said, the, you know, you make it look so easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That is uh, not. <laughs> uh, Kinto, the, your brand, uh, what is the mission of your brand? So the mission of my brand is to touch as many lives, especially women, you know, show them how to live a life of significance mm-hmm. and self-care. And I say significance and self-care because I think in life we have to be intentional. We can't just, you know, live anyhow and let the trade winds take us wherever it blows. No, we have to know exactly what it is that we want and who we are. That's two big things. What what we want, who we are, and so that we can design the exact life that we wish for, right? And so for me, that's my mission to help women see that vision, be clear on that vision for themselves and to live that life of significance and to take care of themselves. Because the thing is, for a long time, the people wore this badge of honor of like putting people before ourselves. Have you ever been to like, I, I think I see it at funerals a lot. Have you, have, have you ever been to a funeral where people say, oh, he was such a good man or a good woman, always put people before himself. Do you hear that? Yeah. That yeah. makes me cringe because I feel like that's so toxic. We have to put ourselves first. And if you can't put yourself first or you can't fill your cup first before giving on to others, then you would always be in that place of lack or you would always be struggling with boundaries or you would always be putting yourself last. And that's going to cause you a lot of a life that is not significant and not self-care. So my mission is really for women to live their lives in an abundant way, designing, design it based on who they are, you know, what they want and take care of themselves and to show others the possibility of doing just that. Interesting. Uh, I had a question on legacy, like how do you want to be remembered as, I think this question kind of connects to what you already Yeah. <laughs> if that is it, we'll just move on. To, yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. And then the part with the global citizenship, I would want as much people in the world to have that second passport lifestyle so that they can have that other option to travel to all these beautiful destinations beyond their imagination and to do business and to also do good work in the world. Oh, so a lot of nuggets, a lot of gems, a lot of inspirational stories and bits and overall your whole story is so inspirational. So for anybody who's listening to this episode, uh, I also have this on my YouTube. So for those people, uh, our viewers, where do you think they can reach you at the best place where you are most active always? Yeah, the best place to reach me is on Instagram. I have my link tree um, there. So you can click on there if you want to have a call with me, meet with me about coaching, about retreats, about speaking or workshops. Also, if you want to invest in a 
Caribbean passport so you can get your um, E2 business visa to the US so you can move your family and um, all, as well as my website. So it's just my name. So Kinterpair. And then my website is www.kinterpair. Okay. I'll also have this in the description. So don't worry about that. Uh, for anybody okay, who great. just wants, yeah, we can, we'll also have the links below. So uh, that was all about from my end. So my last question is, Kinter, is there something that I should have asked you and I have not, you know, because you had been so inspirational throughout. I myself can't imagine that, that story from where a small island you came from. And, and today, <laughs> the person that I see you, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's like a 180 degree shift. It's like 360 degree shift almost. So is there yeah. anything I should have asked you, which I missed out or did not? And if you want to add on, it's, it's back to you. Well, um, I think it, it's fine. You, you did great. You know, um, you asked the questions that I think would resonate um, most with your audience. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess my last words can be that, you know, in life, especially as women, but I know you have men on there too. Um, we came here for obviously greater purpose than ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it will be wise because wisdom is priceless. <laughs> mm -hmm. It would be wise to really, you know, as you think about your dreams and goals, you know, you, you get clear on who it is you are. And by that, I don't mean whether you're a doctor, teacher, entrepreneur, who you are on a soul level, mm. you know, what, what you stand for in the world, you know, who you are being versus what you're doing. I mean, they both matter, but I think, it, you know, we should always continually take stock of what it is we want, who we are, who we are being, what we're doing to, to lead to the life that we truly want. Because Elena Cadone always talk about the choices that we make every day. It can either be building our empires or destroying our empires. So we just want to be very intentional and so that we are choosing correctly every day. And it's so important to put yourself first. I'm telling you. When I started putting myself first, my life took a turn for the greater, you know, um, so put yourself first and just be intentional and always believe in yourself, you know, have faith, like uh, what, like a mustard seed <laughs> as that's, that's the saying. And, um, and yeah, do great things in the world because it's, it's bigger than us. And we are here for so much reasons, more than we, you know, more than the vanity and more than the things that we get to have and enjoy, you know? Thank you so much, Kinter, for your time, uh, for all these nuggets. And I think if I have to take back three tips or what were the most um, important things from this episode, that would be intentional living. Keep yourself first. And the third would be, I think, always building your mindset because it's an everyday work. You can't just take a pause or you can't rest for a day because, yeah, mind functions every day. So we need to keep building working on it every day um and uh, before i leave you kinter i wanted to do i have this intention of doing another episode with you and in for that i want to specifically have this topic <clears throat> surrender and uh, let's see when we can do this next so before we do that and before we meet again so here's a small buy from my end and and once again thank you so much for coming and sharing all these nuggets with my viewers. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. And it's one of my favorite topics, so I would love to. So we'll keep in touch about that. All right. Have an amazing day. You too. Bye. Lots of love Bye. from the Caribbean. Thank you for listening to this episode. You can subscribe to my podcast from wherever you are listening. Hope you enjoyed and learned something from this episode. And if you did, would love if you take a screenshot of you listening to this podcast and tag me on Instagram. My handle is at the rate I Pallavi Kashyap. I will be dropping in the links below in the description. Do check that for more information. Until we meet again, remember to live an energized lifestyle because that is the way to enjoy life fully. Mm -hmm.